I'll have what she's having. I love relationships. I love romantic comedies. I love love. We don't know what Cinderella looked like because she's not real. Yes, they freaking got it. Really earn that happily ever after at the end. Change the writing. It's not that hard. Hello, all you hopeful romantics, and welcome to What She's Having, presented by Meet Cute, where a glass of rosé isn't required, but it's certainly encouraged. I'm Ashley Eskew, and this week we are doing things a bit differently. Uh, instead of interviewing celebrities about how rom-coms have affected their lens of love, we're pulling a full-on mean girl, Regina George, and are judging the best rom-coms from one of its golden eras, the 90s. To help me do this are my personal Gretchen Wieners and Karen, my longtime BFFs, Alex Mahajer and Rebecca Warm. Okay, but which one is Gretchen and which one is Karen? That's what I want to know. Well, honestly, I think Alex might be the Regina George. And <gasps> oh my God. Yeah. I think I feel like I identify as Katie Heron, but <laughs> I'll take I'll take Regina. It's fine. Wait. Which character is the one that tells like what the weather is going to be with her boobs? That's Karen. Karen. Yeah, that's Rebecca. I think so. Okay, so here's how this will work today, everyone. Alex, Rebecca, and I have all brought two 90s rom-coms, each as nominations to the table today. After a brief discussion, we'll cut that down to three. We'll review some rom-com essentials and finally leave here knowing definitively what romantic comedy deserves to be the top of our Netflix queue at our next 90s themed sleepover, which I'm pretty sure Rebecca's hosting. We're all going to have sleeping bags on the floor since I just moved. (laughs) You guys ready to do this? Ready as I'll ever be. And I'm going to be honest, I'm a little nervous. It it was tricky. I'll just say that. That's what I'll say. Way to make us vote for you. (laughs) I know. Real (laughs) advocacy for your choices. Love that. (laughs) A lot of self-deprecation here. <laughs> well, then, Rebecca, why don't you start us off if you're so darn confident? I will. My first rom-com nomination from the 90s is, drumroll please. <laughs> that didn't sound like a drum. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sound effects, please. <laughs> We're going to practice that next time I see you. Um, is Clueless. Mm classic classic come on rest in peace Brittany murphy dark so quickly oh my god oh, that's was, she was one of the greatest like a true rom-com genius star so clueless is i think one of the most classic rom-coms for our generation we can all still quote that movie and i think that means something right come on as if um that's the only quote i can think of right now oh uh, ambular was that you i saw going through my laundry the other night um i guess you totally are voting for me fast because you're <laughs> um rolling with my homies remember that uh, for me one of my favorite scenes is when um dion when she's driving on the on the freeway in la she accidentally do you remember she accidentally gets on the freeway with her boyfriend. Oh yeah, and that leads to them having sex because it was a near death experience. Yeah, it's with Stacy Dash and Donald Faison. When she's like, "I do not wear polyester hair," it is incredibly yes. quotable. And there are like some significant themes in there. Like what? Well, I remember uh, Alicia Silverstone. Remember she has a big crush on a guy and the concept of him not being interested in women doesn't even cross her mind for a while. Do you remember? Yeah, I also remember they used the term cake eater, which I have still to this day never heard in any other format, but that was how they revealed he was a gay man, right? Mm. How do we feel about that? Yeah. Yeah. Is is that a derogatory term or like a cute rom-com quip? As the resident homosexual, I am not aware of cake eater as a derogatory term for my people. However... (laughs) We do have a long-standing inside joke in which we refer to you and your pie slash cake eating. Oh, just me, myself? Yeah. yeah there may or may not um, be an incident I will own up to now where Alex and I were at a party and he may have lost track of me and he came to find me and I was alone in a corner eating a Boston cream pie. Boston cream pie. Completely <laughs> by myself. A Boston cream. Boston cream. This is one of my favorite stories that a new oh, story you- I didn't know. It's a delicious, it's such a delicious story. And it was a delicious pie, presumably. And it, be- it belongs in a, in a podcast that's about rom-com. Totally. I mean, this story. 
needless to say, I was definitely the tie in high school and not the Alicia Silverstone chair character. Well, that's mm. a Oh, oh, see, I disagree. Ha- having met having met Ashley in college, I disagree because to me you were very share, but I I certainly wasn't, and I think that was another reason why I loved that movie so much is because it just it just spoke to the high school experience. I felt like even though it was about like a bunch of rich kids in Beverly Hills, I felt like it still you had like when when they did uh, the pan of all the different clicks. You remember, I could like I could still remember that so clearly from the movie. It's also based off Emma, and That's true. There, a lot of rom coms have super interesting source material, and I do think the adaptation was very well done, turning it into like a rich, privileged Beverly Hills existence. Um, you took the words right out of my mouth, Ashley. <laughs> I was gonna bring up the source material of Emma, and I'm so sorry. I, <laughs> and take, I take, take credit. No, I mean, no, I'm being silly. I, I did not think of the source material. Um, I'm, I'm just um, wanting to make myself feel smarter. Um, but yeah, I, anyway, that is my first pick is Clueless. I okay. just feel like people love that movie. I don't think you're wrong. I think it's a big contender. We've got Clueless on the table. Alex, what have you got? Okay, well, my first nomination is for a film from 1992 called The Cutting Edge, which is a figure skating movie. And I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's such a delightful film about a uh, a disgruntled slob of a former hockey player whose career in hockey is over. And he's recruited to pair up with a female figure skater who's uh, a rich, white woman and uh, an elite figure skater, but so terrible and unlikable personally, and so difficult to work with that she can't maintain a partner for the life of her. And uh, this guy is paired up with her through a, through a series of circumstances, decides to start competing with her in a figure skating. And by the end, they're performing the move, the Pamchenko twist. Will they be able to do the Pamchenko twist by the end or not? I don't know. And spoiler alert, they do it. And they kiss. And it's just a perfect movie. And it's got figure skating happened during the era of like, I think right when Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding were involved in their uh, little tiff. Uh, And interesting, also, I feel like Clueless was taking place as like, you know, Beverly Hills 90210 was like the hottest show on television. And so, yeah, kind of a reflection of the time and fun and a gay old time. I do love The Cutting Edge. First of all, it was Moira Kelly pre-West Wing. And Moira Kelly, like, let it rip. The, like, flirtation through digs at the other person is strong in the cutting edge, and I am there for it. Topic. <laughs> Topic. Topic. <laughs> it's just a cute movie, and it's really well acted, and uh, maybe capitalizes on some tropes, and we can talk about this later. And I think all of the films we're talking about rely heavily on certain tropes, but um, but a fun film. Listen, not that I want to already be, be throwing your pick under the bus, Alex. Oh. But I do know The Cutting Edge is a great movie. But I think the fact that we felt, I say we, but, but you did it, Alex. <laughs> the need to explain the plot again oh. for, for listeners, just in case they... I, do you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's, is it that classic? Is it that much of a hit if we don't all remember it very clearly? Maybe, but look, it's like basically unlikable woman meets unlikable man, unlikable man through series of circumstances, they fall in love and figure skating is the background. It's not really a plot intensive film, but I thought maybe give a background, but maybe you're right. I'm going to defend my choice because can you do the Pamchenko twist? Didn't think so. Oh, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> you bring up a good point, which is, are we voting for the most classic 90s movie? Or are we voting for the best? Ooh. And I think that's what we need to figure out yeah. as we're doing this. Keep that in the back of your minds. Yeah, context is everything. Well, you know, for me, rom-coms are not my genre of choice, which I disclosed to Ashley. It's not like, 
that's not my go-to. So I picked rom-coms that I enjoyed given my general distaste for the genre. That being said, I picked one that is what I think one of the greatest films of all time, but it was made in 1989 and was disqualified. And that was when Harry met Sally, which I think is one of the greatest films ever made. I mean, we named our show after right. it. It is the best of all time, inarguably, right. 100%. Yeah. 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 I am going to throw it onto the table. One of my biggest guilty pleasures that I have loved since childhood, and I'm terrified to see how you guys are going to react. And that is the 1999 classic with Melissa Joan Hart and Adrian Grenier, Drive Me Crazy. Oh. Featuring the vocal stylings of none other than Ms. Britney Spears. Exactly. When they walk hand in hand into that party and you hear the na 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 Exactly. The only thing Ow. this movie is missing is a cameo from Britney herself. Well, the music video, Melissa Joan Hart, isn't it? True. Good point. Thank you, sir. Here's why I love this film. First of all, it was written by Rob Thomas, who went on to do Veronica Mars and comedy cult classics like Party Down. Yeah, so, yeah. The humor is very adult and subtle for a 90, 1990s rom-com. I actually was going to do She's All That, and I watched them back to back to figure out, and Drive Me Crazy held up so much stronger in terms of the themes it was exploring. Like, there were actual reason why Melissa Joan Hart and Adrian Grenier were attracted to each other. Like, she's the ultimate insider that's trying to control the system from the inside because her life feels out of control, and he's the ultimate outsider trying to control it by being counterculture. And like, they find relief in each other. And there's a, a montage, like a shopping montage, but with a man instead of a woman, we're exploring some really big things for 1999. And it's just freaking entertaining. I, I'm gonna tell you, it is a great movie. It's again, like the cutting edge, a great movie. I find it really interesting that, that your first two picks are not, what I would call like the most commercially popular or even the most memorable when you think of 90s rom-coms. Uh, no, I agreed. I don't think yeah. Drive Me Crazy it was, I don't think it was even successful at the box office. Right. I think it was successful with me and I am leading with passion tonight. I love it. Because I think you can rewatch a rom-com 20 years later and feel that same joy in the pit of your stomach that you had watching it in the theater. That is why rom-coms are like this, why I'm trying to convert Alex to actually love them. It's like this everlasting genre that we absolutely need and can stir so many things within us. That's a good point. That's a, that's true that if a movie can hold up like that for you, that you still, you have a visceral experience that many years later and, and you're not in, the, cause that, that movie, they're adolescents, right? Are there, they're teenagers. They're in right? high school. Yeah. Yeah. They're in high school. So it's like, if and you can have that feeling when you're, only how you're only like a couple years out of high school, right? Ash, yeah, oh, me, yeah, barely 21, right? Yeah, now. yeah, um, Child when, Wonderkind. yeah, yeah. So, when you <laughs> so when you can still have that experience, that's true. I guess that is a marker of a great rom com. I just think, and I, I am gonna say, I'm very happy you brought up She's All That because I also I was teetering on that too. She's, I mean, because it was a great. To be clear, not my second choice, not on the table. I nixed mm. it. Mm. I thought oh, it did too. not hold up. Oh, me too. I nixed it too. But I think it was for me, it was going to be between Clueless and She's All That. I think there's a like, to Rebecca's point, there's a lot of like very popular 90s, especially in the late 90s when the like the genre started to it, like drift more towards like the teeny bopper crowd that are very like memorable and popular films like The Never Been Kissed, The She's All That, that are lasting in our memories. And yet the picks that we made were movies that we enjoyed and weren't necessarily the go-to sort of That's, has, popular yeah. films, which I think is interesting and worthy to note that maybe that's my reticence to embrace the rom-com genre is that those big popular films were like really they're fun and they're fine or whatever, but I find them kind of like reductive and maybe condescending. Yeah. Do you feel that way about Clueless? Because I really did enjoy Clueless so much like when I was younger, but I think I, I haven't, I mean, I think I, I still would enjoy it now, but do you, but I think it was one of those popular ones. I think Clueless is a smart movie. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's self-aware. It's in on the joke. It's yeah. like not, exactly. it's not taking it. It's got its, its tongue firmly in its cheek. And I think it, that's smart. I think that's an amazing point 
I think the way a rom-com handles its comedy is a huge factor in us voting today. Like how do these scripts handle comedy? So Rebecca, why don't you think about that as you give us our fourth nomination on the table? Okay. I'm going to preface this nomination with, it was very difficult for me to not pick a Julia Roberts movie because Julia Roberts is, I mean, she is like a rom-com icon. Mm. Say that three times fast. It's not that hard to say that probably, but, <laughs> um, but she is, and I didn't, I did not pick a Julia Roberts movie, but it was very hard for me. Like it was almost painful to not pick one because I think she was so important to the genre, especially in the nineties. So I just have to say, put that out there. But what I am going with for our fourth nomination is as good as it gets. Mm. Now, yes. It was yes. also on my list. Oh, I love that. Okay. Because as good as, and it actually speaks to what we were just talking about um, in terms of how the movie actually uses comedy and Alex, what you were speaking to about poignancy. And so I specifically chose as good as it gets, but for those reasons, because I think it is a rom-com and it has a lot of very real human experiences in it that I think are challenging and painful and beautiful at Jack Nicholson's character, you know, um, Melvin it, it, like with, with his mental health, with having OCD um, I'm like, I can't think of, um, uh, many rom-coms that really touch on that on, on mental health. Well, I'll note Helen Hunt and Jack Nicholson both won Academy Awards for their performances. Exactly. And they were, were deserving of those directed by James L. Brooks. He's done a lot of like, well-known like films. Young Frankenstein. No, that's that's um, Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. Yeah, this is right. um, James L. Brooks. Yeah, so Brooks did broadcast news, turns of endearment, Spanglish. He is a producer on The Simpsons. There's a ton of stuff that he has contributed to our entertainment world that is unmatched. Yes, this is true. But also, so Helen Hunt's um, character Carol, um, like, so she's. Jack Nicholson, his character's Melvin's basically like like waitress server, and she's the only one that can kind that can put up with his neuroses when he goes to eat at this restaurant every day. So speaking of meet cute, I love their meet cute story because it comes from it, it's not like I don't I don't think we ever see them meet for the first time, but I think we can imagine what their that dynamic was like, just because we see their dynamic, their interactions in the restaurant. And she really doesn't put up with any of his shit. Not that she doesn't like, not that she's not compassionate and thoughtful with his OCD, but she doesn't allow him to be nasty because he can also be nasty to people. Um, And, and then, you know, he ends up helping her with his, her son's medical bills. And then, then you also have um, Greg Kinnear's character is um, Simon. And remember, and he's Melvin's uh, neighbor. And well, I guess I'm not giving too much away. Came out in the 90s. Um, he's an artist. He gets attacked. That's right. Yeah. Was Greg Kinnear's character. Now, I haven't seen this since I was a child. And honestly, I haven't watched it since I have a better understanding of human relationships and mental health in general. But was Greg Kinnear's character gay or straight? He was gay. And gay. that's why he got beat up, correct? Yes. And- yeah. Oh, uh, wow. Just a little note, a straight actor playing gay, but it was 1997. So hmm. let's hope I we think it's more forgiving. worth mentioning though. And yeah. is that negative points out of context. I don't hmm. know. We have to decide this, but I have a question is as good as it gets. It's definitely amazing romantic film. Is it a romantic comedy? I think it's viewed widely as a romantic, as a comedy and with a romantic element I mean, it, it lists on like every top 10 list or top 100 list of romantic comedies from the 90s. It, it, they, people we know how included, Alex did his research for this. Yeah, so. that's, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> but, but I mean, it's, it's listed as a, as a romantic comedy by a lot of people. I think it's a dark comedy yeah. that, ha- that features a love story, but it doesn't feel like a romantic comedy comedy in the traditional sense because it's not it's not it deals with like some more you know it's heavier issues and a a little more serious 
more of an adult film, I guess. That was the exact reason why I wanted to pick that as my next nomination. And also why I was a little hesitant because in my, I'm going, does this fit in with what, what, you know, we think of as rom-com genre, even though it is technically, I I would say it is technically a romantic comedy. Um, But ultimately I thought like, those were all the reasons why it deserves the nomination. It's hard to argue with that. Okay, Alex, what do you have to follow up? Okay, well, like Rebecca, I I had an internal conflict because I too feel like Julia Roberts is so crucial to this genre, especially in the 90s. Uh, and like, how can we talk about rom-coms without talking about Notting Hill or Pretty Woman? Yeah. Um, My Best Friend's Wedding, obviously all worthy choices. However, I picked a film that was popular for my generation. I feel like those, like we're the, like um, we're the millennial, like kind of right there in the middle of the millennial crowd. And Pretty Woman came out when I was too young. Like I, I it, didn't, it didn't mean anything to me personally because I was like five, okay? So, or six or seven, I don't know, seven. Cutting Edge also came out around the same time, but I still love that movie, but that's just because I'm gay and figure skating. So there's that, <laughs> but Uh, My choice, my next nomination is for 10 Things I Hate About You, which is uh, features the performances of Joseph Gordon-Levitt and uh, Julia Stiles and the uh, wonderful, brilliant Heath Ledger, who has since passed, who won a posthumous Oscar for his performance in my favorite movie, The Dark Knight, neither here nor there, different genre. I will not subject you to my thoughts on that film now. However, I mean, brilliant brilliant uh, actors, all those that those actors went on. Poor Larissa Olenek from um, uh, Alex, Mack Alex Mack did not take off in the same way. However, it's a female led film in the nineties, which I think is also worthy of note. It's based on William Shakespeare, Taming of the Shrew. Uh, so it follows the, the same sort of uh, complex um, maneuvering of that sort of uh, that, that play. And the positioning and maneuvering and the the people's intentions and trying to get a date with this person, but uh, you're paying this person to date her so you can go on a date with her. So it's like this big love uh, shape, multi-sided love shape. And it was made for the teeny bopper crowd, but it's a really smart film that people who appreciate maybe Shakespeare or Taming of the Shrew can watch with with a knowing smile and enjoy for the performances and for the complexity of the script. So I, I just think it's cool to like take Shakespeare and aim it to like a younger audience. And it's a fun film and it's, it pulls at the heartstrings and yes, female focused leads, which I think as I've, as I've come into my own feminism in my adult years is cool to reflect on in the nineties. Cause I think that at the time may have been considered novel. I actually think that's something the rom-com genre was doing better before all the other genres was putting women at the forefront. Well, but then treating them like, like love is the ultimate end goal. Like they've got to be this idea uh, of what a woman is supposed to be in order to obtain love, right? And in this film, the girl embraces who she is and makes, and the guy falls in love with her for who she actually is. And she doesn't feel the need to change herself to, to uh, garner anyone's approval. She's also considered a shrew. She is the titular character. <laughs> so it's treated in a novel way there, but I think it's a, uh, I think it's, it's a cool movie where the, the girls are just themselves. Larissa Olenek's Prada bag, a central character of the film, but yeah, <laughs> I like the movie. I will also give you one of my favorite tropes. I think it is one of the best grand gestures in any rom-com period when Heath Ledger goes and sings with the band when she's out I playing soccer. The best. Baby, which is my mom's favorite song. <laughs> la, 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 <laughs> Rebecca, my mom's a 70-year-old Persian woman. I love she it. She just knows, I love you, baby. La, 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 um, I, I will tell you 10 things I hate about you was also on my list that, so I, yes, I agree with you on all the points that you are making. Okay. But now allow me to win you guys over because something you've both mentioned you wanted, maybe I will deliver. I think it is an underrated film, but it is a Julia Roberts, Richard Gear film directed by Gary Marshall. I'm going with runaway bride. Oh, 
the faces for everyone were just so disappointed, but hear me out. It is one of the first rom-coms to really look at self-love. No, wait, I think Runaway Bride's a great movie and well, but keep going. Okay. Yeah. Well, sell your story. Sell, sell yeah. your, sell your pick. Okay. Yeah. Well, obviously the star power is stronger than any of our other films with Julia Roberts and Richard Gere. They're just rom-com royalty. Look at the B characters. We've got Hector Elizondo. We've got Rita Wilson. We have got Joan Cusack. We have Christopher Maloney. We have this incredible cast surrounding them, supporting this story. But the best part of it to me is the scene about the eggs where he calls her out very quickly that she does not know who she is and she is trying to change who she is for a man, which as we just discussed, is kind of the issue with all these 90s rom-coms, even if a female's at the center. And Runaway Bride directly addresses that you can't love anyone else until you love yourself. And Come on, RuPaul. Yeah, okay, RuPaul. Okay, RuPaul. And that is why I love it. And at the end, she does bail from the wedding, but even though the relationship has ups and downs, like they are meant for each other and they find their way to each other. And since she has wronged him, she goes and she proposes. We get a proposal on each side. We get them both professing their love. This is an equal relationship where they make each other better and stronger as opposed to he saves her. I do. I listen. I love that. <laughs> and I think, no, I, no, no, no. And I'll tell you something that I love about that movie also, in addition to all of the fabulous points you just made, is that I like that she's the runner. I like seeing a like experiencing a woman be a the runner in the relationship, just because I think in the, what we were saying, like the other rom coms, I don't think I don't really think we see that all all too much, right? She's if she's running, she's running towards a man, not away. Well, so you're right. They flip the narrative on its head. Oh yes, you're saying in the other in the other in other examples, right? Yeah, that's what you were addressing, right? It's cool that she's. She's running away. Yeah. Because that's also real sometimes. I just felt like it, I feel like that movie doesn't play into the stereotype of like female lead, you know, wanting man, man running away. So I do like that about the movie that it like flips that. I just think of all Julia Roberts movies, if we were gonna pick one, I just don't know if I was expecting Runaway Bride. You know, Runaway Bride has a lot of winks to gay people. People have speculated that there are intentional fashion choices in the film that are aimed as a, as a nod to gay people, like the way certain women will, will wear flannel or like little, look it up, look up the gay fashion moments from Runaway Bride. It's a thing. Um, but that being said- That's a whole episode. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, <laughs> I don't know if that, that Runaway Bride is a film that I even really remember or find particularly memorable. My heart is broken but I do accept all of this feedback. It's one of my fa parents' favorite. Oh, ouch. I think that hurts. Like, Oof. I think oh, I, my parents I love, love that your movie. parents. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you love my parents. My parents love mm. you. Yeah, my grandma really liked too. that movie. <laughs> That's like a Regina George put down. <laughs> I love Where did that you get hurt? that movie? Get I love it. <laughs> That is the maybe what I said was very Gretchen too. My parents love that movie. Cool. <laughs> Stop trying to make that movie happen, Ashley. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It's never going to happen. <laughs> okay. We have six films on the table. One, granted, I thought was going to go over a lot better than it did. You were wrong. But we have <laughs> you were wrong. Clueless, mm -hmm. The Cutting Edge. What was mine? First one, drive me crazy. Oh my gracious. Something we really feel strongly. <laughs> I do. I do love that film. Truly. Uh, as good as it gets. Alex's 10 things I hate about you. And the now clearly going to get cut runaway bride. We have to narrow these down to three. Do we okay. feel like we need to talk more? Or we're ready for a vote. What do you guys think? I feel like the general consensus of the group so far is that as good as it gets, is different for the genre, incredible performances, a sophisticated film. That Clueless is a classic that really sets up a lot of the, the later movies like Mean Girls and, and, and others. I mean, it, it sort of lays the groundwork for what is really topical for our generation. And that maybe as good as it gets, or uh, uh, 10 Things I Hate About You is a, is a smart female 
centered film that is based on Shakespeare and, and does the genre proud. But I'm going to put those three in, in for top consideration, which includes none of Ashley's choices. I am heartbroken, but I accept that. I think that is the way to go. I and think so too. yeah, my broken heart that's full of self-love and nostalgia <laughs> for things I actually love look, can exist on its own. Look, the cutting edge didn't make the cut. It was not on the cutting edge. <laughs> but one of for one of us, both of our nominations made the cut. Wow. <laughs> Get your friend, Ashley. Get your friend. You know it's real bad, guys. I genuinely almost dropped Runaway Bride and put in the wild card of the 1997 Rodgers and Hammerstein Cinderella made for TV movie with Brandy. We'd be having I, a whole different conversation right now. I didn't no. love that. Should we throw it in as a wild card? <laughs> no, that no, because then I've got wild cards to throw too. Oh, okay, fine. What's done is done. Because couldn't Cruel Intentions be considered a romantic, dark comedy? You know, like it's no. we're really like if we're gonna play fast and loose with the genre. How does that end with a death, not a marriage, but right? But love. <laughs> but, but love. But love. But Reese Witherspoon was in it. <laughs> but, but Sarah Michelle Gellar. <laughs> okay, so we got our three on the table. Alex and Rebecca are still in the running. I am just a sad opinion here on the side now. Uh, we have Clueless. We have As Good As It Gets. And we've got 10 Things I Hate About You. I have to say strong choices. Definitely. I still, like, on behalf of Julia Roberts, want to say sorry yeah. but maybe that's more a statement to the strength of julia roberts yeah and not so much the films themselves and there's a reason yeah. why she is who she is and i mean but she, she brought a charm to those films yeah. that really made them what they are but maybe if you took her out of them were they as memorable so like our deep apologies to julia roberts we still love you you're still our girl but maybe yeah. there were some better films during the 90s than the ones you were in. that smile is so beaming I'd like to point out, none of us brought up a Tom Hanks Meg Ryan vehicle, and they had Sleepless in Seattle and You've Got Mail. And, in yeah, the 90s. that's honorable mentions, just honorable mentions. Yes, these are honorable mentions. Which are the same film, really. Yeah, I mean, it, exactly, except for they actually get to see each other in You've Got Mail. Fair point. I think we have to talk chemistry. Okay. So let's, let's talk Helen Hunt, Jack Nicholson. Their chemistry is the kind of like snarky, I don't like you. I don't like you, but really I'm falling in love with you. Chemistry. And I think you see their real love in action and not just in wooing, um, which like we see a lot of wooing often in rom-coms, but um, the way that they care for one another and like the way that Helen Hunt takes care of Jack Nicholson, you know, when he's in the restaurant, but, but also uh, throughout the movie as they go closer and the way that Jack Nicholson helps take care of her son. Like, I feel like you see them there. You see how they really love each other. But, it, you know, I, you don't see like sexy ooh la la very much. But it is kind of nice to look at love on a deeper level. Right. Okay. Okay. What about Heath and Julia? My vote is still for 10 Things I Hate About You here. Because it managed to sort of like take uh, sort of the seemier, more like culture bound aspects of the taming of the shrew, which is like really about a man that's like beating his high spirited wife into submission and turns it into something kind of contemporary and sharp without losing the romantic aspect. So it's like, and the, the chemistry between them is like undeniable. You talked about the, the music scene and really it's about two people who, you know, are outcasts and don't feel the need to be different. And they she has a period of betrayal with him where she she feels hurt because she finds out this was all part of a bet but what is actually happening is that although he's intends to be sort of passive and he doesn't really care and he's just doing it for the money uh, disaffected and sort of impenetrable that he's actually falling for her and softening up and that chemistry is such a that's such a difficult and interesting thing to play that I think it has my nod. Also, how can you say Heath Ledger, who's one of the greats and he died, you guys, he deserves your vote. I'll tell you what, if you perform the Julia Stiles poem at the end, I will give you extra points right here and now. Ooh. I have to look it up. Okay, while you're doing that, I just realized as Alex was speaking, the rom-com in Clueless is kind of messed up. I know. I knew. I, yeah. Yeah. I didn't talk about it before, but I was thinking about it afterwards. We didn't. Yeah. I adore Paul Rudd. And I yeah. can like 
literally it's not incest, but it, mm. it grosses us all out. Can but we just own that? Paul Rudd is still fine all these years later. Very true. But it is it is pretty weird because he's her he's her stepbrother, right? Yeah. In the movie, like that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. And he's in college and she's in high school, Ooh. which at the time yeah, wasn't an issue. Show. But I think now, you know, mm. doesn't yeah. hold up. That doesn't hold up. Okay. The poem from 10 Things I Hate About You. I hate the way you talk to me and the way you cut your hair. I hate the way you drive my car. I hate it when you stare. I hate your big dumb combat boots and the way you read my mind. I hate you so much it makes me sick. It even makes me rhyme. Oh, Julia. I hate it. I hate the way you're always right. I hate it when you lie. I hate it when you make me laugh. Even worse when you make me cry. I hate it when you're not around and the fact that you didn't call. But mostly, I hate the way I don't hate you. Not even close. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. <sighs> Scene. Ooh, oh. That was really good. So I have a question now. After Alex's brilliant performance, is there anything quotable from As Good As It Gets? I don't know. I don't I know. I know you can be overwhelmed and you can be underwhelmed, but can you ever just be whelmed? Okay, that is actually one of the best lines of all time. Yeah. I, I just have to say, I think we need to consider quotability when we're thinking about these okay. films. That's reasonable. Which leads me to something very important to me that we brought up earlier, which is happy endings and rewatchability. How do these films leave us feeling? What is like, what do we take away from them? And then how many times in our life have we gone back and revisited them? Well, Clueless is a more quotable film but has problematic overtures with regards to the interpersonal relationships that don't hold with time. As good as it gets, also not a quotable film, but is a film that celebrates love in an authentic way between people who are have real problems and are troubled and have real life problems. It's not, it doesn't gloss over the ex, our, our human existence. So in that way, it's a more maybe affirming film and something to look to for a dose of reality. And then 10 Things I Hate About You sort of celebrates the chemistry of the film and has a, is a sophisticated take on an old story that has a happy ending and is like kind of warms the heart and brings a tear to the eye. So really it's toss up depending on the criteria. Well, now I'm kind of like a little bit down on mm. Clueless with what we were talking about with chemistry. Like it kind of has, like for me, it's now kind of at the bottom mm -hmm. of the three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, neck to neck now. So between as good as it gets and 10 things I hate about you, as good as it gets, it's an Academy Award winning film. But let's say we were all to hang out one night and watch the movie, I would probably like want to see 10 things I hate about you. I think that's what I feel too. I feel like we can revere as good as it gets for being a, and a, what it is, which is an Academy Award nominated film for, for good movie. reason. But at the I end of the day, yeah. this Friday night, when we have a sleepover at Rebecca's house with, with <laughs> sleeping bags on the floor, what movie do we want to watch to have a kiki? What movie celebrates if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Well, Runaway Bride, not not this one, but on the count of three, <laughs> I think we've come up with a winner. Let's all announce it together. The best freaking rom-com of the 90s, according to this group of beautiful mean girls and misfits, is... Pretty Woman. 10 Things I Hate, Ten things I hate About You. <laughs> Ten Things I Hate Ten About things You. Things I Hate About You. <laughs> Oh, my choice one. I can't believe it. You guys like me. You really like me. How does it feel? I can't believe that I picked the winner. That's how it feels. <laughs> I, you know, I feel good about you picking the winner, and I feel good about both of my nominations having gone. I do really too. Far. And you picked really worthy choices. And it was only upon Thank further you. inspection that one of them had problematic themes. But a, a classic, I mean, you picked two brilliant films. If in any other circumstance, I feel yeah. like those would have walked away as maybe more widely, yeah. broadly agreed upon as being critically yeah, perhaps, yeah. loved films. I agree. It would have, they would have had the commercial, commercial mm -hmm. vote. Mm -hmm. what, what do the listeners think though, Ashley? 
Ashley, you pick good movies too. Uh, thank you for being such a good friend <laughs> and lying through your teeth. I so appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I think that's the next step. So we've decided that I have horrible taste and 10 things I hate about you is the winner, but I'm curious what the listeners will say. So all of you hopeful romantics, make sure you write us on Instagram at meet cute or on Twitter at listen meet cute and tell us what you think we will be back here with another category in a few weeks so make sure you chime in i'm ashley eskew i'm rebecca warm i'm alex mohajer and i'll have what she's having hi me cuties we're so excited to let you know that you can now binge our newest series influence exclusively and ad-free on Wondery Plus. It's Meet Cute's modern adaptation of Jane Austen's Persuasion, and we know you're going to love it. 